Well, hello, all my dudes and dudettes. Yes, Major League Butt Kicking is back in town. We're once again back here at Nail's apartment in W2K14, so pop a top on your favorite Pepsi, sit down with the choice of a new generation as we jump into the new generation here in 30 Years of WrestleMania here on the Xbox 360. So as always here on this channel, we're going to shoot for all the objectives here on this little section here at W2K14. We're going to go through about seven matches here today, but we're going to start off with Razor Ramon versus Shawn Michaels. So that WWE Intercontinental Championship ladder match, WrestleMania 10, is what we're going to be focusing on first here. So we got win by obtaining the titles. Yep, that would be the obvious one there. We got get HBK to moderate damage in the ring. A hidden objective. Ugh, those hidden ones. Attack HBK with the ladder. Yep, duh, duh. And then hidden objective. So we got a couple here we're going to focus on. Let's see if they give us any trouble. A historic. WrestleMania 10, Madison Square Garden, Sunday afternoon, March 20th, with an unprecedented match. And who better to give it to you? Shawn Michaels, a ladder match. Two belts hanging at the top of Madison Square Garden, along with all those people hanging from the rafters. The heartbreak kid is going to be up there taking what is rightfully his, the IC belt. Yo, boy toy, you say you're the real champ? I say I too much confusion. WrestleMania 10, Chico, somebody gonna decide. If it takes a ladder, man, no problem. There's no rules, no ref, no time. Limit. Somebody, Chico, leaves WrestleMania the real champ. Ladies and gentlemen, in the following contest, there are no rules. The only way to win is to ascend the ladder and remove both belts to become the undisputed Intercontinental Champion. Introducing first, accompanied by Big Daddy Cool Diesel from San Antonio, Texas, weighing 234 pounds, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels has his sights set on Razor Ramon and the Intercontinental Championship hanging over the ring. So here at WrestleMania 10, we have this first ladder match here, this one that really kicks all of it off here for the rest of all time. It's not the first ladder match by any stretch, but it is the one that wedged its way in the heads of so many that came after as inspiration. Concerned, Shawn Michaels is the undisputed Intercontinental Champion. The original champ, never beaten for the title. What else can you say? This capacity crowd is ready to witness the first ever WrestleMania ladder match. I love WWE 13. I love the way it looked. But this game just takes it and just turns it up to another couple notches. And it just looks... Just the, phenom the phenomenal presentation I'm just in awe of, both in this recording and the prior one, uh, that first episode. Game looks really good. These two have been battling since the fall of 1993. HBK was stripped of the Intercontinental Championship due to inactivity. Right. And after that completely unjust action, Razor Ramon defeated Rick Martel to claim the vacated title. HBK then showed up with his own Intercontinental Championship and refutes Razor Ramon's claim as champion, claiming HBK never lost the title. The only way to settle this is here tonight. Both championships are hanging overhead. The first person to retrieve both titles is the undisputed Intercontinental Champion. If you watch my first episode here for W2K14, I'll, I'll just say, as in that video, I, I'm going to be quiet a little bit more towards the beginning of these matches and maybe during the entrances just because there's so much they put into the pageantry and the presentation of this game. I don't really want to ruin it, especially you know during the entrance of someone like uh, Razor Ramon here, Scott Hall, who has since left us. I want to give everyone here in the ring the, the respect that is deserved. But in either case, yeah, uh, the beginning of the matches here, I might be a little quiet as we... Listen to Jar and the King there provide their commentary and give us a little bit of the story in the background of each of these matches. 
listening to them talk there, I feel like the first thing I want to say in this first match is uh, there's something to be said and the fact that the story of this match is Michaels loses the title because of inaction and it's like, what do we have going on nowadays with people like Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns and it's like, Reigns is hell of a worker and nothing to say against him personally, it's just more of a preference thing. Obviously Reigns battling with leukemia and all that and everything in his life, uh, you know, he's, he's put in the work, I'm not going to deny that in any way, I just, I, I grew up in a different era and I, I like seeing my champions, I like seeing my champions every pay-per-view. I think it adds prestige to the title. That's why moments like Triple H losing the title to Jericho were so, you know, intense. Because that intensity was really just the manifestation of everything the crowd was feeling because of how long we were seeing Triple H with that belt on him. Everything he had managed to overcome and getting it and keeping it. And when your champion's kind of not visually there, what's there to get behind as far as energy goes? Now with complete control. So our first thing to get is you gotta get him to moderate. He's at light. So I'm kinda of messing around here a little bit. We're gonna stand on him here, press him down there. That's illegal. It's not illegal for five seconds. JR, I got five seconds. I have till five! He's gonna ask why is the ref outside of the ring, but it's a ladder match. Don't need that fucker in here. He's just there to say, yep, he's got it. Although Gonna be a stickler. I don't know what match it was I watched recently. It was a ladder match, obviously. Especially after the whole Carmella getting it from James Ellsworth thing. It's like, what constitutes a solid win and victory in a ladder match? Let's uh, uh, say for you. Uh, mention it in the comments. Get in there. No. <laughs> ah. No. 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 Why does it always do that? Uh, why does he always just hang there right afterwards? No. Thank you. Electric chair drop to Michaels. Do I have a? I have a finisher to him. But as soon as I. Uh, again, I said, as soon as you go for it, that'll be the hidden objective. Get a finisher on him. So it's like, save it. But yeah, what constitutes a win for you in a ladder match? Is it when the object is physically removed from the hook? And it's in your possession firmly? Um, say for, I don't know, three seconds, let's say for the count of a pin. Or is it when you have the object in your possession and your feet are on the mat? You know, what's the metric there that we're using to measure a victory in a ladder match? I need to know. Well, shake, rattle, and roll there. Clothesline, my razor. So I feel like I've seen it go both ways where you don't hear the, the bing, 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 bing until the person or the, the object hits the, the ring mat. And I've seen instances where, you know, you hear the bing, 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 bing as soon as, like, the strap is undone or the, the hook's undone for the clasp on the whatever's hanging above the ladder there. Just go for the fucking razor's edge then. Fine. Uh, it's going to be what I need to do as soon as I get him into moderate. Watch it. I'm going to lose my shit if it is. I sincerely do not know. It could be the... Usually it's a moment, though. Well, he's got a comeback, so no, we'll stop that. Halt yourself, Michaels. We're, we're not there yet. Let's get the ladder in the ring, maybe. Sean's going to go do that. Nope. He's like, I'm going to slingshot myself. I'm going for a ladder, Shawnee boy. You need to work together. Yeah, it's, oh, it's always a moment. Top row blended in with the crowd. I was like, where the hell did it go? Super shred around the outside with the interference there. I don't know why he's trying to hide it. It's a no disqualification match. What does our referee say? He says, well, you know you? You are out of there. That's what he says. Sending Diesel to the back. I, I would argue that no disqualification would mean whatever Diesel does is up to his himself there, but I guess the referee's discretion is what we're going to yield to. He says, get the fuck back there, Diesel. Go star in some Punisher movie randomly. A oh, kid, I love Kevin Nash. All of his movies are great. He, he knows he knows what he needs to stick to, and he sticks to it. Critical damage in the ring. So, yeah, okay, so. 
Get fucked by Diesel. Fuck HBK in return. Okay. Uh, phrasing. Looks like the aggression is going to be turned up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, attack HBK the ladder. I was the, I was, I was an objective. So there we go. Come on, Sean. Can I taunt with it? I always want to. I don't know why. I always have to break up my taunts anyway. We're gonna get you to critical, critical, critical. We're gonna get you to critical and probably then have to finish her. You. I know the proper verbiage is on that, and I'm not gonna even try to figure it out here in the moment. Yeah. Screw you, your animation can't get through my animation. It means chaos for you, and oh, tilt world neck breaker to me. Showstopper indeed. Oh, goodness. Get up. Also, I'm not reversing things for anybody today. My percentage is garbage. Not as many matches as this time as last time, but uh, I feel like this one, this, this episode has the, the, uh, yeah, it seems like there's no rub breaks either. This episode has the potential to be a nightmare just with all the stipulations and all the upcoming matches. I did look just to see how many matches there were, but on the objectives, I'm not really clear at the moment. Maybe another Razor's Edge, even though, again, they're going to make me do that finisher. It's either going to be a finisher or a weird moment that I'm not remembering, because I don't know how they structured these. And I just played it when it came out. On the ladder, maybe? Nope. No, I couldn't spin him any further. So, I'm assuming it's just win, then. What's the hidden objective? Get up. Sean, you need to get up and start something. Initiate an animation that I need to, to do. He just wants to jump and leap at me. Okay, there we go. Scoop slam out hard. Mid-90s canvas. I don't know what's harder around this time, the ring or the floor outside of it. You can make the argument for either. Out of the way. Back body drop on that concrete ain't gonna feel comfy. Okay, I should in a ladder match. In the corner. Oh, don't knock me on then just have him go up the ladder and that's torture. There you go. Fuck you, Sean. Get down. No, no, I don't want to just... <laughs> How many comebacks you gonna have, you no-selling son of a bitch? Stay down. I will turn this ladder match around. I don't... I don't... <laughs> I'm trying to maneuver the ladder, but it ain't folding up. Why ain't you folding up, Mr. Ladder? Either way, it's outside the center of the ring, so he's gonna have to mess with it if he wants to go upside. If he wants to climb up it. So tough. Tough or yeah. $10. Take. All right. Come on, get it. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do. Right, I'm going to put it in a corner. Paul, you saw the button to lean, and that was not it. That was it. No. Uh, ooh. Does it, have, does, it, does it have to look like that? Or does it have to be in the corner? We'll find out. Boom! Oh, can be like that. Do a move on to the ladder. Yeah. Shoo. All right, and then I just gotta win, I guess. What's his signature? Oh, fall away slam. I'm done. Oh, that's not the center of the ring. Nor is that. Forgive me, the animations here are what's going <laughs> to... Watch me just... Okay, I was going to say, watch me just set it up for Sean there. Why don't I have a comeback? Give me a comeback. I don't have a comeback, but I got a razor's edge here for Shawnee Boy. Send him in the next Tuesday in Texas. Shoot. All right. But he can't stop me now because he's unconscious. 
I mean, that slow. Oh, that. Oh, God. The selling all the way to the top here. Come on. Really? 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 Sean. Sean. That was inappropriate. Takes forever to get up there. Gets up there. And then. Oh, it's just so old school fucking game bullshit. Ah. Uh, break your neck onto this fucking thing. I swear to God. I do it the old school way. Whip mothering. So they. Yeah, I was going to say. So they have to get back into it. Sean, you prick. Just beat on him some more, I guess. Hurl his ass out again. But then he knows what we're... Of course he's going to knock it over. God. Dilly dally and darn it. Ugh. Buttery biscuits in southern Georgia. This is some bullshit. Get off. Get back here. What are you... And his misses. You know what we do for you, Sean? <laughs> Jesus, this... God damn. We'll do this. I'm going to prep the ladder and give him, like, a signature and finisher outside the ring. There we go. This will do. Follow a slam him outside the ring. Really? Watch him get me out of here. Oh, y'all, fuck off. Fuck right off. No, sir. Why is he taking it down? It was perfect. Get up. I hate this so fucking much. Well, not in his hand enough because he's down on the mat now. I had a good idea. Take him outside the ring here, like I said. Now it's going to be a finisher and not a follow away slam, Mr. Michaels. For your sass just there. Wasn't going to do it, but you asked for it. Get in there. Climb the damn ladder. I don't even know how to retrieve it. I'm assuming it's a thumbstick. How? How am I not there yet? I hate how particular it has to be right here. And really, I give him a finisher. And on the outside, and he gets back up into the title quicker than I can. Or are you shitting me just from falling off the ladder? Ooh! I'll take it. I'll take it. I thought he was going to go for it and get greedy. No, he went for he went for the spotlight there. Looked like a champ. It's just destroying me. I expect this match to go like this. If I do not get it in this one, I'm just going to feel sad because of how long I've lasted. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up, Razor. I believe in you. You're like Tink at the, the end of Peter Pan there. Eat shit. <laughs> Get up. There you go. Go on. You little sea biscuit, I tell you. I think that's perfect. There you go. This is one of the worst ones as far as like. Ugh. Randy Orton has power slam. Get the fuck out of here. Come on. And of course it fucking falls. It keeps going off at an angle. I don't mean to do that. The Irish whip, anyway. It should be good. It's going to be close. If not, it's off center in a way that. And then that's going to be it for me. Really? Dude, he just chooses to jump. 
It's so weird. I don't understand that. Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? Okay. All right. Mr. Michaels. Why do I just roll over like that for him? Literally rolling over like that for him. I hate the fact that that animation exists. Oh, what the hell is that? What? What? Okay. All right, then. Okay. Miles High Razor's Edge. Oh, my God. Uh, all right, then. I... <laughs> I, no words. There exists no words. Oh my god, what an ending to that. No way. Oh my god. So with a glitch to end it for Razor Ramon, Scott Hall walks away with this initial match here in this new generation. Oh my god, playthrough. Oh, with the IC titles. Oh. Didn't see that coming. I'm gonna, gonna say. Didn't see that coming today. Well, we don't say one and done over here at Nance's apartment for no reason. We may not be perfect, but oh boy, we deliver. And I'd say we delivered on that one. Every single objective there, glitch in all. But we walked away with a victory here in Nance's apartment with those two Intercontinental titles on the shoulders of Razor Ramon. So now we're in the main event of WrestleMania 10. Bret Hart versus Yokozuna for the WF title, a sort of rubber match from the WrestleMania the year prior. Oh, but Mr. Food. Oh, in the eye. Bret Hart lost to Yokozuna, which you could see in our last episode. Hulk Hogan coming in, taking the spotlight then and there, but here we have a chance to make up for it. So we got win by pinfall or submission, get Yokozuna to critical damage and two hidden objectives. I'm not assuming this one's going to be hard at all. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. One fall. Approaching the ring, accompanied by Mr. Fuji, weighing 505 pounds, the WWE Champion, Yokozuna. And now, Yokozuna will square off against Bret the Hitman Hart. What kind of condition physically is Bret Hart in? What kind of condition mentally is Bret Hart in? And that may be the key right there. That's right. Physically, he's probably been in worse shape before, but mentally and emotionally, never. He's got to be at the lowest point in his career, and that's what's going to spell doom for Bret Hart. Yokozuna, unquestionably a monster. WrestleMania 10, a gem to watch, but as far as this particular episode on Nana's Department, I would say it's one of the best WrestleManias to watch in terms of the changeover from that larger-than-life superstar being like Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior to the more mat-based wrestling grapplers like Bret Hart. You watch the match between Bret and Owen Hart at WrestleMania 10, you will know the athleticism that just the WWE was injected with at this point in time, the energy, the charisma, the... The pure mat based skill that it was injected with at this time was just a you know a huge, a huge positive in my in my eyes to the product. As we see Bret Hart here and give his glasses as he is wont to do, to a young kiddo here in the crowd. <laughs> Looks like he poked him in the eye a little bit there. I'm seeing a little blood squirt out, but I'm sure his parent will. Get a nice t-shirt from the merch stand and wipe it all up for him. 
Here as we watch the entrance of the best there is, was, and ever will be Bret the Hitman Hart. As we see, this match will be for the WWE title here. <laughs> Little lazy graphic there for you. No, yeah, I forgot the uh, the ref uh, enforcer here is uh, Hot Rod, Roddy Piper. They should have given his entrance. I'd like to see that. This is Bret Hart's second consecutive WrestleMania main event against Yokozuna, and it's for the WWE Championship. Well, this all started when Lex Luger and Bret both won the Royal Rumble when they both touched the ground at the same time. That's right, King. A coin toss determined who would face Yokozuna first. Luger won the coin toss, but lost his match earlier in the evening. Well, Bret Hart battled his brother and lost in the opening bout this evening. That loss has to weigh on the hitman's mind. Taking it to Yokozuna again here easier than I thought I might, but again, I'm assuming his stats are nowhere near good as Bret's. I, I keep saying all the shit about stats in my episodes. There's probably a minuscule amount of programming that has to do with what I'm thinking of. But it's nice to mention it. It's Mr. Fuji. I don't believe... What? What? What was that? Was I focused on Fuji or something? What? I, either way, I'm still in the positive here. Yes, I am. A little taunting here. I just mentioned that Piper is the enforcer, and I'm looking at the person in the ring like, who the fuck, why does the ref look like that? And it's like, oh, it's Piper. From behind in a white t-shirt, go figure, he doesn't look like Roddy Roddy Piper. It looks, like some, it looks like some security dude is in the ring like, yep, this is a wrestling match. Uh, oh, a little tilt whirl. Moving around Yokozuna. Like a son of a gun here. I have no idea what that was. Okay. I'm just like, I'm dumbfounded. What that was that like a... Well, for a pile driver here? Oh, he gets the big man up. Drops him on his head. Yes, sir. He got him to moderate. Go for a sharpshooter here. I'm surprised they've gotten as many big moves on Yokozuna as I have, to be to be quite honest here. It's one of those matches where it really isn't a challenge. It's just kind of like, let's put it in there because people will be thinking of it. And, and not. But I will compliment Bret Hart here in this match in real life. Uh, he did a really good job at protecting Yokozuna, making him look real good this match. I'm sure Yoko was in the beginning of his decline right about here. Again, I keep going, it looks like I keep going over to fight Mr. Fuji. Over there. Suck a butt. Making me botch all my top rope moves. Heading back into the ring now. I get back. So <laughs> just like I'm kicking so much butt that I have time to go out and beat on his manager too. That's how effortless this is. Oh Moss Man Slam, aka Black Hole Slam. Realized I called it a black hole slam. That's because I'm used to watching Abyss do it, but I, I guess uh, Boss Man did it first. About time to actually get one in the ring here. Alright, okay, what is it? It's flashing. I can't read. Four top rope move on Stanny Okazuna in the ring. So, exactly what I did literally to open the, the match up. So, yeah. Crown him. Crown him. Crown. Oh. <laughs> Swerve. <laughs> literally. Yokozuna, unquestionably a monster. Calling for the bonsai. Just realizing how generic the crowd is. Oh, and all that weight just drops. Such an odd finish. Oh, pin Yokozuna. Ten seconds. Okay, shit. We got a cover. Press two. <laughs> I was going to say, caught me off guard there. Didn't see that one coming. But either way, we get another victory here on Nana's apartment. Brett walks away with yet another WF title.
the big man went for the bonsai drop. He lost his footing and seemingly knocked himself out. Well, that made easy pickings for Bret Hart. Yokozuna there went for the bonsai drop. His chances of winning the title dropped right out of the picture there as you see Bret Hart winning the victory. WrestleMania 10. All right, WrestleMania 11, Undertaker versus King Kong Bundy, a time where King Kong Bundy was not relevant really at all. So we uh, win by pinfall submission, duh. Hit old school signature move on Bundy, body slam Bundy, and win by pinfall. I feel the only problem here is going to be figuring out how to do old school. Kong Bundy again flattered in this game because they make him look pretty sharp, pretty chiseled there, but not really that way in real life. And his opponent, accompanied by Paul Bearer from Death Valley, weighing 328 pounds, The Undertaker. The Undertaker on his way to the ring. A man who's never lost at WrestleMania. And take a look who's leading the way. That ghastly looking Paul Bear. <laughs> he looks like death warmed over in a waffle iron. And this capacity crowd, ladies and gentlemen, somewhat in awe at the presence of The Undertaker. Patentry of the World Wrestling Federation, never more in excellent view than during an entrance of The Undertaker here. The phenom of the WWF seen here with his manager Paul Bearer leading the way to WrestleMania 11 as we aim to take out King Kong Bundy here being as he was undefeated into WrestleMania 30 I'm going to leave it up to the audience here to figure out who wins we just featured Undertaker and a solid video Featuring Steel Cage Challenge for the Nintendo Entertainment System. You can also catch that on our channel here. Check that out. That was a fun video to make. By the way, here again, I'm, just, I'm soaking in the pageantry here. I love the look, the design here of everything in W2K14. Oh, everything just looks goddamn gorgeous. Shout out the audience. It's a little lazy on this side. I'm going to say, I don't like the fact that they just used the generic WrestleMania logo for the ring apron for so long. I feel like they could have, like, WrestleMania, I don't know, was it 7 or 8? The one with the... Uh, like the WrestleMania with Sergeant Slaughter main eventing as champion, I feel like you could do something just at least a little different with the color every time. Like, the purple and silver color for this one would have been nice. Oh, let's do body slam right off, I guess, real quick. Maybe, maybe you have to wait. It's just showing us how to do a body slam later. I feel like I'm going to get my ass handed to him, but it shouldn't be that way. He was not that athletic in this match. Undertaker, if anyone, was the one who made this look good. Oh! Making me look like a fool right now. Oh, oh it's a signature anyway in my old school, so that's fine. Just realize that. That'll make it a lot easier. The only thing I had a problem with this match is no problem at all. One of those things where, like, gloved, uh, sock-booted Undertaker grew on me. I didn't like it as a kid, but now, now that I'm older, I like, I like the color. I like the ripped sleeves of that, that shirt he wears. There's just something in that design. I just... On the money. On the money. 
evidenced by his lengthy career. Ugh! I just can't he's fucking kicking my ass, this guy. Mr. Egg, I do not appreciate oh, the fact that you are being so stubborn in this booty kicking today. Again, doing the same thing with the manager. I'm just like taking out Teddy Bias. I didn't even like focus on him intently if I if I did in some way or form. I don't know how to necessarily do that in this particular game. I haven't played a tag team match really. Top of my head. I'm afraid to ever go to the turnbuckle now because I feel like I'm just going to go after fucking Ted. All right. Okay, he does it automatically. Okay, just go right to it. Boom, boom. Check that off the list. Maybe thinking old school. Maybe thinking, King. That's a good assumption. There we go. Slam him there. Oh, no. Oh. That's a good way to tease it. Well, fuck off. Tombstone, you then body slam me, you big bob bastard. Yeah. Dodge that, you prick. And that. And body slammed him. Right, match stipulation win by pinfall after submission, but you gotta win by pinfall. Alrighty. Let's finish this one. I wanted to finish it with a tombstone, but the motherfucker, he forced my hand. I gotta pay attention here, because I'm terrible with these pinfalls. Is that it? That stupid splash? Was that his finisher? Really? <laughs> Didn't think I'd get that one at all. Oh my god. What a prayer that was. Jesus Christ. That was that was praying to the wrestling gods silently and they listened to me. God, you just... I don't... Alright, I was going to say... Uh, reverse that... <laughs> A big mean. Thought I had a signature. One to that DDT. He's in the driver's seat. I'm getting cocky here, and I don't care. Okay. Do another old school tombstone. Call it a day. Yeah, the fucking corner, Kyoto. Charles Robinson, whoever the fuck you are. There it is again. I love JR. His little quips. Get up! Pin him. Pin him. That should be enough. All, I feel like all these are pretty simple this time around. I would say we earned that one there. Didn't know if I was going to walk away with that first try, but again, one and done. Call that a victory for Nana's apartment. So once more at WrestleMania 11, we're going to face off uh, Diesel here and Shawn Michaels. These two friends here, a crack is going to form right down the center of their friendship, and all we're going to just have to sit and watch it. But either way, we know the click's going to be fine after this one, but what do we got to do? we got to win by pinball submission, engage BK with a big boot. Oh, stretch out them quads there and get HBK to critical damage and two hidden objectives. Oh, well, just keep trucking along, I guess. I haven't stopped these yet. Let's go for it. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Championship. Making his way to the ring from San Antonio, Texas, weighing 228 pounds. The number one contender, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, ladies and gentlemen, a tremendous athlete. He has waited for this. He has trained and sacrificed for this. I talked to him earlier today, and he promised me, he told me to tell everybody to expect the performance of a lifetime here tonight. Well, JR, HBK is known for his speed, and 
athleticism and all around agility. But don't forget the super kick that's put down many WWE superstars over the years. In my book, he's the favorite to take home the WWE Championship. And his opponent from Detroit, Michigan, weighing 317 pounds, the WWE Champion, Big Daddy Cool Diesel. We are live, ladies and gentlemen, at WrestleMania 11 in Hartford, Connecticut. Big Daddy Cool Diesel against his former tag team champion partner, Shawn Michaels. We're going to see firsthand who the weak link of that tag team was, JR. Just look at the size of Diesel. Eat your heart out, Shawn Michaels. This match actually, I wouldn't say it was that bad. It wasn't anything spectacular. It wasn't worth fireworks, but... As a person who didn't know what to expect going into this match watching it, uh, I remember thinking, this was well done. Especially when you think about it, you know, two friends that love each other, they want to make each other the most money they can make each other, you know. Those Click members, they're going to make matches look good, you know. They're, they're reliable, they're damn good wrestlers. Every member of the Click, you know, had fucking chops and then some, so. You know, this match was, you know, nothing poor. It was just, you know, two distinctly different styles clashing. Why did I even try for that graphic? Come on. That was lazy. I hope someone got Doc pay for that. The WWE Championship is on the line as this one is underway. HBK Shawn Michaels squaring off against Big Daddy Cool Diesel. This one is so hard to watch, JR. Shawn was Diesel's boss. Big Daddy Cool is biting the hand that fed him. Well, I'm not sure I agree with that, King. Now, don't forget, Michaels hit Diesel with Michaels' patented super kick at Survivor Series last year. Diesel took exception, ditched Michaels, and vacated the tag team titles. Just three days later, Diesel pinned off Backlund in just eight seconds to win the WWE Championship. Now it's time for Sean to teach his former bodyguard a nice lesson. Well, Michaels gets his shot to do just that. Look at Shawn Michaels. He has to be quick. He's going to have to use his agility and cunning to negate the brute force of Diesel. Shawn is a ring technician, JR. Technically, I'm not sure if Diesel even knows what a ring is. That's the question. How do you do a big boot? I'm trying to figure it out. I have no idea. I hold the button, like the directional button, like... Yeah, I was going to say, the strong strikes I've done in this match thus far are me experimenting with it, but... Left, right, up, down, nothing. That's why I whipped him against the ropes at the beginning of the match. I was like, I'm trying to figure out how that boot. Trying to figure out what might be the way to do it. But if you run at him with a, that strike, it's just kind of like a running knee. So I'm kind of like... No idea. Sean finally gets some offense in there. And the styles here are just completely different. Finally getting some reversals in him, though. I want to go to the tape. Did fucking Diesel wrestle in his vest the whole match here? I feel like that'd be, again, like we said with Macho Man that last gameplay. Certain outfits here. You just be sweaty motherfucker. Fucking boot. It's like the one time I need to know and they won't tell me. If you do them against the ropes, you won't do it. Or did I do? We'll try them against the ropes and just kind of standing here. Hey, it's just like a shoulder block. What the fuck? Maybe it's a signature. I assume it's a signature, maybe. I'm not, not exactly sure. Diesel never gave him a two weeks notice. Do you know that's bad etiquette? Props to the King there for giving proper commentary, telling a story there. Diesel didn't even get a two weeks notice. We call that Atwell employment, folks. Shawn Michaels in his rights. Full disclosure, I don't support that shit at all. <sighs> I'm no heel. If you're going to give two weeks, your company should have to give you adequate notice in certain circumstances. Assume it has to be a signature of the boot. It has to be. Just gonna think if I get a finisher without using it. Did you hear the impact from that I think he's giving me opportunities to reverse him, but. 
Leave me alone. I'm just trying to get a signature here. Of course, now it turns into a fucking finisher. Yep. Well, we'll do this and then we'll get him to a signature again. He's like, I'm on the inside, you're on the outside. I'm Shawn Michaels. That only means one thing. Is there a stamina system in this fucking game? I swear to Christ. Ooh. Stamina system, but no targeting system for Shawn Michaels there is it's way wide of the mark. Back by a drop by Diesel. Just outside Sean. Why are you why are you doing the silliness? Yeah, stay dazed. How do I what? 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 <laughs> God, I have to look this up. Apparently I was right, it's a fucking Signature, but it's not giving it to me. Do I have to restart it though if I don't get that 10 seconds? I feel like I'll get it. Oh, we will re restart it. Watch it. He looks fired up here. All right, should be his signature here. So, we'll boom, knocked him right in the face there. I'll do a fucking power bomb and finish him in 10 seconds. That should be it. Ooh. Yeah, there we go. Cover him. Luckily, it's far enough from the ropes. And call that a day. God in heaven. Gonna go ahead and say that last match was lame sauce, but either way, we got Diesel coming back again for WrestleMania 12 against The Undertaker this time around. So we got win by pinfall submission. Yes, obviously hit a choke slam on Diesel, tombstone on Diesel, and win by pinfall. I like it when they're all obvious like that. Let's hit it and quit it. Come on, let's get to it. Contest is scheduled for one fall from Detroit, Michigan, weighing 300 pounds. Big Daddy Cool Diesel. Well, here he comes. He's cool, and he's big. He's Big Daddy Cool. And The Undertaker will be meeting this seven-foot monster. And you wonder whether or not the big diesel truck by the name of The Undertaker just might run over Big Daddy Cool here at WrestleMania. It can only happen, ladies and gentlemen, at WrestleMania. I must say, Big Daddy Cool. Looks like he's pretty much keeping his cool, at least for the moment. I'm sure The Undertaker's been playing some mind games, but apparently it hasn't worked. Just the little details here again in the presentation of this game. Diesel's hair in this one versus the last match. Just that little bit of art direction that was paid attention to. It's the little tiny details that make this such a complete package and an amazing experience both as a gamer and a wrestling fan. Ah, chef's kiss. Should have said it in the last video because it actually had WrestleMania 9, but I did the math, I, I believe. If you watch Groundhog Day, the young couple 
in the the film they get WrestleMania tickets. They get WrestleMania tickets to I believe what it would have been WrestleMania nine. WrestleMania, <laughs> which it's like, oh, I got WrestleMania tickets. Yeah, but WrestleMania seventeen, uh, WrestleMania nine is not. So, uh, uh, well, at least they got to go. I've never been, so they got they got further than I ever did. So that's. That's something we can say there as we watch The Undertaker make his entrance here at WrestleMania 12. It'll be 13 the next year. That would be the lucky one for The Undertaker, but it's not like he isn't again undefeated here, so it's not like it's a surprise who's going to be winning this particular bout, but will I be winning with all the objectives? Well, that's why you folks are here. You're going to see if I can do that. I do not have any doubt. I believe it'll go over pretty smoothly. Apologize for that last match. So that was garbage. Just, uh, I hate when I don't know what button to push and he just turns into a mess. Whose knees will give out first? Two of the biggest men to ever step foot in a WWE ring. The Undertaker and Big Daddy Cool Diesel. One on one. These two have been interfering in each other's matches and costing each other their chances at the WWE Championship. Certainly no love loss between these two, as capturing the WWE Championship is every superstar's goal. That's true, but when your goal is at the expense of The Undertaker or Diesel, well, you got trouble on your hands. What an impact from that kick! Thinking about going to do a tag team video on Steel Cage Challenge because you can go for the WF Tag Team titles as well. Just trying to think of different combinations of people you can make on that game. And I was thinking like Undertaker and Diesel. You got Dead Man Diesel there. For a uh, gallon. I don't know anything about diesel prices. Do I sound like a trucker? No. Wait. <laughs> Why do you have a signature already? What the hell is that nonsense? He's got a finisher. What is... Oh, I'm going to call someone about this. Yeah, one account. What are you going for, you knucklehead? All the knee problems are going to your head. Looks like my head is going towards the canvas there. Launched jackknife powerbomb off of Diesel's shoulders here. Luckily, I've learned how to do this stupid kickout mechanic, so that wasn't too shabby. Diesel here just... Give me the business here. He's angry. Does that make you mad? Is the knees comment too much? If it makes you feel any better, my knees are equally garbage. Here in Nana's apartment, we do not make fun of uh, Kevin Nash lightly. Hell no. My knees are horrible. It's more a tongue-in-cheek. Uh, I've earned the right to say it myself. Although, again, my, what is my knees have not exploded nearly as much as uh, Kevin Nash's, but... Nonetheless, neither of us are going to be running marathons anytime soon. Be funnier to see see us run like a baseline to see which one of us goes first. You know, uh, nope, just flat out nope on that. I believe his choke slam is a signature. We'll find out. No, I forgot. I'm stupid. It's fucking old school. It's oh, I, oh. So the modified signature has to be the choke slam. I'm a silly bo Billy. Uh, well, we'll at least get the tombstone. Weaken him a little bit. Can't hurt him. I mean, it can hurt him. But it can't hurt me. Just yeah, thinking with your noggin, Paul. Just thinking about something. My dog's looking at me like he wants something. Give Nash a choke slam. Give him a tombstone. Give me a pinfall and then give my doggy some dinner. I think that's what we'll, we'll do here, ladies and gentlemen. Is it not even a one count? Get fucked. Oh, he's going to counter me every single chance he gets, this son of a biscuit. Oh, are you taunting me into a finisher too, you rude bitch? Oh, that's disgusting. Don't do that. That's not, no. Mr. Nash. Mr. Nash. Sir. 
Oh, skin of my teeth. Don't know how I got out of that one. Oh, my God. That wasn't what I wanted. What the frig? Are you shitting me? Oh, and upon further research, it's his modified finisher. So this, this should do it right here. Get up, you. Oh, goozles him. Lifts that arm over the shoulder, gets the post, boom, slams him down. That should be all she wrote there, folks. Got slow enough. I'll buy that for a dollar. Take that victory. It's always nice when something stupid goes in your favor. So we arrive here at WrestleMania 12, the new generation, the match. Shawn Michaels versus Brett the Hitman Hart, the Iron Man match. That's right, 60 minutes of grueling, agonizing competition between two of the very best in the WWF at the time. Here, and we've arrived here at WrestleMania 12 for this match up here. Let's see what we got here first and foremost. Don't believe it will be a 60 minute match, but either way, we got to earn the most points within the time limit. Duh. Complete the WrestleMania moment. Two hidden objectives. Going to sudden death. Tied 0 0, obviously. And then a hidden objective, which is probably winning in overtime, I would imagine. Either way, for those not in the know, 60 minute Iron Man match. This is how she goes. You got 60 minutes. The person who wins the most falls. Submission, pinfalls, or if you manage to get a disqualification victory from your opponent because they broke the rules in some way. Either way, the person with the most falls at the end of 60 minutes is your winner there. So let's jump into WrestleMania 12 and see how the, the match goes between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. Listen to this capacity crowd. Wait a minute. That's a hundred feet in the air. Is that who we think it is? There's only one heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Look at that. Unbelievable. What a ride. Shawn Michaels, ladies and gentlemen. Capacity crowd, and what is still landed in his quick Shawn Michaels. Here he comes. This contest is the special Iron Man match for the WWE Championship. Making his way to the ring from San Antonio, Texas, weighing 227 pounds, the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen for WWE action between perhaps the two greatest athletes who have ever gone tights. And his opponent from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, weighing 234 pounds, the WWE Champion, Bret Hitman Hart. The Hitman, Bret Hart. What an ovation. Both athletes appreciating each other but only one will walk away from WrestleMania as the WWE Champion. And you can bet that they will both give their all. Oh, you're right, JR. And after everything we've seen here tonight, neither one of these guys may be able to walk out of the ring. Well, folks, that's what it's all about. The WWE Championship. I'm going to go ahead and admit it right now, folks. This is the only match out of this playthrough this episode that scares me. Uh, this match here, I believe the first time I played this game, this gave me a little bit of trouble. I'm not sure, but the, the match with Macho Man and uh, Ricky Steamboat gave me trouble, and I remember that, and it did end up giving me trouble in our first episode, so I feel this could be the one in this episode, folks, that gives us the most trouble here. As one person who isn't having trouble right now is that kid there in the front row. Oh, so you know what? It looks like he got him in the eyes again. That Bret Hart just got, oh, yeah, it's sticking right out of his left eye there. Might need medical attention here in the front row. Anyways, Bret the Hitman Hart, the WF champion here, getting ready for an Iron Man match. The graphic's not great, but it's not terrible either. As we see here, this match will be for the title here. Never before 
There's got to be zero. So I can't do anything uh, as far as gaining a pinfall. It's not going to be for an hour, is it? No way. tradition and as skilled as any superstar that has come before him and then there's hbk brash arrogant and not afraid to tell you exactly how good he is and he backs it up every night well both men will have plenty of time to showcase their skills the most decisions within i think perhaps the hitman has been worrying a little too much about what the fans think of him if brett is not totally focused or tries to please the fans, he'll come out of losing. These people are certainly divided. Half of them are Hitman fans, and half of them are for Shawn Michaels. The crowd's allegiance may be divided, but they are united in their anticipation. Look at that first moment. This one will end. Oh, no matter who has their hand raised tonight, WWE fans will come out the winner. These two are going to tear down the house for an hour straight. And again. I don't know what the hidden objectives will be. I don't think it's going to be an actual hour. If anything, it'll be theatrical and we'll be experiencing it with, you know, breaks in the time. Irish whip moderate into the ropes. Okay. This is the one moment we've already done. And it's at the beginning, so that's fine by me. That means we don't have to dig around with it later when we've already worked towards other things. I know it's not moderate yet. I was just trying to go for it. Generic whip there. Just these, yeah, these long matches that have moving parts and many variables. It can be tricky here. So just play it, play it cool. Don't go for anything extreme. I believe there are disqualifications in this match as well, so don't go for a chair or something stupid like that. I hate this one's going to be the tricky one, and like the way I set up my recording setup here, uh, my back is killing me already, so this is going to be a nightmare if I screw it up some way. Can't touch Bret Hart there for about 30 seconds. What an elbow by Michaels. Some type of buffer on me. And the the What's his signature? Is this elbow? I'm assuming it is. Boom! Did I miss that? Son of a biscuit. They don't call him the best for no reason, folks. Bret Hart's a wily one there. He's got a signature already. Fuck off. I think it's gonna be if he goes for a pin on me. I forgot that was a signature shit. Still nothing, nothing. Ooh, that was a nice little counter there. I'll take that. Going to our next objective. Ooh, couldn't get it there though. Likes to jump to Zen Michaels. Not shy with the... Yeah, I was going to say already half hour's gone by. Uh, I was going to say critical into a turnbuckle. And then sudden death. Okay. So just beat on him some more. Oh. I was going to say earlier in the video, but we'll, we'll show you here yet. There's a way you can kind of get your taunt up in wrestling games if you just want to play with the computer here, especially with Shawn Michaels' taunt. But basically, I don't want Brett to beat on me in the ring where he can get a, a victory or a fall here in this Iron Man match. So I'm going to keep... I'm going outside, getting a taunt here and there, just working up my specials so I can kind of work up a finisher on him. But yeah, my main goal is I don't want to be in the ring where he has finishers and a fucking opportunity to gain a fall. But I do want to keep taunting and not having him interrupt my taunt, so I'm just going to keep cycling out of the ring like that. That's how I do it anyway. Suck with folks. This is... Oh, he's wise to me, that Mr. Hart. He was raised in the dungeon. His daddy taught him how to do it. He's like, grip the controller with both your hands, Brett. Now run like a little bitch. Push A, push A next to the ropes. Run like a little bitch. And then I'll break her ankle and I'll stretch you. I'm sure it went something like that. Back into the ring now. 
fucking elbow on him too. Oh. <laughs> is his finisher just a sharpshooter? Does he have a move as well? Unless the sharpshooter is a move, but I mean. You ain't gonna get nothing on me yet, you tool. Sean's back hurting about as much as mine is right now. I fling the, the hitman over his... Stay down there, Brett. No, that's not staying down there. You're going to whip me off. Oh, yep. You're going to take me off. He's going to go for a maneuver here as well. Superplex. No. Uh, that's why they call him high risk. But no reward there for Brett yet. Shawnee Boy's like, I got you. Don't you worry. You're getting critical. Come on. Shitting me. Did he take it? I think he took my finisher, the little prick. Oh, I hate that feature so much. Especially against the computer online or against another person. It's like, oh, I thought I got the comeback in there. I did not. Really? No, yeah, get out of there. Get out of there. No, I do not give. And we're squared none apiece. You fucking bastard. You sharpshooter ain't getting nothing on me. Oh, God in heaven. That's why I tried to get out of the ring. I knew he's just going to keep going for it. Again, the amount I'm going to have to redo if I fuck this up. If I get this in one go, I'm going to be so fucking happy. Right now, I'm just trying to not let him get a move in on me, and it's like I can't fucking avoid him. It's pissing me off. None of my, like, it's like my reversals are gone. At least my kickout skills are not, you know, avoiding me today. Not the reversals. Let's do a comeback. I was trying for a comeback, but it's not letting me have it. Oh, of course, he's going to do that Shawn Michaels sell as well on that bump. 20 minutes. Come on. It's like, I can't get one move in. Other than that stupid slot, that, that side headlock takeover. I'm trying to do a comeback, Brett, and you're not letting me do it. Get out of the ring. There you go. Fucking. Oh, it's, yeah. I'm getting tired of the fact that, like, he's getting, like, I literally cannot get one move other than that stupid side headlock takeover. He's just having his way with me. I knew I was going to hate this match. I knew it. Ugh. At least he got one move on him. Get out of there. Again, get out of his, get out of the ring so you don't have to keep kicking out his stupid pins. Taunt up. Nope, bounce away, bounce away, back out. There you go. Taunt again. We will get a grapple him on the outside. There we go. Take him out of the feet. Back into the ring now. So what is it? The rate of two seconds a second? What the hell is this? There we go. And as soon as he's back in the ring, watch him like... No, oh, no. Get a finisher. Get something on him. Thank God. I'm going to go for a switch in music now. Hopefully that'll get him to critical. We'll get him into a turnbuckle. I don't know how well I'm going to do after that, but... Oh, we'll get that at least. I hate that he has a finisher still. I'll whip him to a corner. Get us to this section. That's it. Okay, 30 seconds. So I got to last until till nothing. Should be fine because he can't get a pin on the outside. That's where we like to be. Or oh, countouts though, Paul. <laughs> countouts. There we go. This will be it. This will bring us to overtime. No, no, Brett. No, no. We got to make it to the end. No, no, no. 
Yeah, can't get me. Wee. The 60 minute time limit has expired. However, this match has been ordered to continue under sudden death rules, which means there must be a winner. We're in overtime, JR. This match will continue. Like how Fink explains sudden death. It's in the name, Fink. We don't need to be explained. It's in the name. Sudden death. First fall gets the finish. Two finishers on him. Oh, my God. There, come back. At least give us one finisher. Oh, we got a signature. Okay. Signature. Boom. It looks like I have two finishers, though. Do I? Or does he? Two finishers. There's one. There we go. Oh, I do have two. So that's fine. <laughs> Just beat on Brett when you're back in the ring. That's that. That's the objective right now. Just beat on Brett. Um, get back up. Yeah, it's gonna make sure he falls in the center of the ring. Ooh. Just, oh, just all oh, the replays. Brett's gonna want to see a dentist in the morning there. And that's it. That, that has to be it. One, two, three. There we go. Well, that's a one and done for Paul here in his department yet again. Iron Man match here. Done and in the books as we see HBK there with the WWF title here in our main event at WrestleMania 12. So I believe this will be our final match up here in this new generation section. WrestleMania 13 here, uh, Bret Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin here. Bret Hart coming into a match here after a loss with Shawn Michaels there. We just saw it, WrestleMania 12. So let's see what we got here. It's a submission match, obviously. It's a famous match. Many of us here in the fandom, not in the dark. Let's see here. We got to win by submission. Duh. Get Austin to light damage outside the ring within two minutes. Hidden objective. Use the ring bell on Austin. Hidden, hidden objective. Okie dokie. Either way, there's one hell of a note to end it on. So let's get to it. The following contest is a submission match from Victoria, Texas, weighing 252 pounds, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Listen to this crowd. Listen to this response. Nothing fancy about this man. You talk about in your face. That's who Stone Cold Steve Austin is. A lot of people say he's the most dangerous man in the world. Steve Austin says there isn't a human being walking the face of the earth that can make him quick. And I believe Austin. This is going to be one of those matches again where we talked about Bret Hart and Owen Hart earlier in the video about how they really defined the new generation here. This new athleticism, the new charisma, the new embodiment of what it is to be an athlete here in the WF. Uh, these two here put on a one hell of a match here at WrestleMania 13. It is definitely one to watch if you need to understand what makes a grappler a great grappler and what makes a wrestler a great mat-based technician because these two fellas, well, hell, they know what they're doing. And uh, to watch these two go at it, WrestleMania 13, uh, we'll get into it, but it's one of the best matches you could ever watch as far as pure selling and selling the product and what's going on in that ring. This is, this is, this is what I would say this is a bar for a lot of people to meet. has taken somewhat of a turn. Brett's demeanor has soured, JR. He doesn't appreciate the stark aggression and frankness of many lately, most notably Stone Cold Steve Austin. 
and it's boiled over as of late. Many think Bret Hart was out of line for the abusive obscenities he hurled on live television. Well, Naz's apartment will rarely apologize for the obscenities that we throw out there, but we try to stick to interjections here. Either way. This matchup is not going to be clean or pretty. No, it's going to be one hell of a, a fight here. It's not going to be a matchup. It's going to be a fight. As we see the kitty at ringside here. Oh, he's bandaged up this time. Bret Hart easily able to slink the sunglasses there over the bandages around his head. In fact, he's still bandaged up over a year later. Oof. Poor little Timmy. Ah, limb targeting. So basically we're being taught here how to break down your opponent, grapple your opponent, and hold LB. Or is it RB? Let's see here. I believe it's RB. I cannot read it from my vantage point, but it looks like RB. Uh, y to attack the head, XB to attack arms, and A to attack the legs. Okie dokie. Versus Stone Cold Steve Austin in a submissions match. Well, it wasn't LB, that's for sure. Here at WrestleMania. Let's try and figure it out here. Oh, we got to get into light in two minutes. I was like, wondering why the hell is a timer there. Uh, can't get back here. I need to fight you. Don't run away. What are you running away for? I don't believe that's the way this match went. No, not me. I got to get you to light. That's right. And of course, he's going to reverse me because it's like, you need to do something quickly. All the computer stats are going to be jacked, so you can't do that. Paul, there has to be a challenge. You can't just, you can't have them give it to you. Well, I, you know, there's challenge and then there's, there's baloney. And this smells like baloney. Yes, yeah, it just keeps reversing it. I can't grapple him on it. I'm going to restart this. Really, am I? That's going to be sad. I don't want to edit that. Come on, get in here. I think that's why he wants me out there. It's like, son of a biscuit. Maybe, maybe, or maybe it's trying to give me a, a bone by being on the outside. So I drop him on the, the outside there. You know, a little more damage. But it's Bret Hart. He doesn't have many heavy moves. He's technical. Well, whip him against the, the steps, Paul. Oh, we'll keep going. You got 20 seconds. 19. Oh, uh, no, it's not going to happen for me. Come on. We'll go, we'll go until it's done. He's just literally walking away from me there. Oh, six, five, four, three, two, one. No. Ay, 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 ay. Come on, let's get out. No, now you want to fight in the ring, do you? Why were you all about being on the outside just a minute ago? This all started after Austin won King of the Ring, and then he began to taunt Bret Hart. Austin won. I guess we're going out now. Or is he just trying to get away from me? I can't tell. I'm just going to say unrelenting is the way to go, I guess. Yeah, beat on him, beat on him like the the faux corner here against the guardrail. Uh, I guess there's no disqualification. I mean, I suppose I could hit him with a chair. We'll try it anyway. Can't lose by disqualification. It's a submission. Oh, there's no chairs. Oh, he's getting something. I didn't realize I could do that. I'll take this garbage can that... Austin was nice enough to get for me. Still no light damage? No damage? Come on! There we go. Now look at the ring bell. Is it not over here? A, yeah, use the ring bell. We all like a good ring bell. Bing, there we go. Come on, Austin. Get up. Get up. I put the ring bell down. You can come back in. What are you going to do with the table, Austin? We're not having dinner. We're having a submission match. Get in here, you fool. Jeez. Oh, 
it's so violent. I'm assuming it's some type of moment here that we need to trigger here. So we'll do what we say the last couple of videos I've done. Uh, if you don't know what is coming up, get him at least to moderate and then critical. So at least there's a different state that your opponent can be in before it tries to prompt a, a sequence or something like that. But yeah, this match, I, uh, let's get into it now, I guess. I wanted to watch it fresh before this video because I wanted to say, you know, some things about it, obviously. And what I'm going to say is this. If you're a young wrestler or a new wrestler or if you don't know what to do as far as selling and kind of how to act in the ring as far as being tired or showing, you know, the appropriate amount of wear and tear for wherever you are in a match. The table disappeared. <laughs> This is a good stretch for your legs, Austin. This will keep you spry. Well, it was not in the no submission match. The only way to win here. Can't win by disqualification. Can't win by pinfall way to win the match here is to force your opponent to give up to say I quit tap the mat be done with it oh done with my attitude there back body drop that Austin critical damage on his legs okay so it's RB that's how you attack the legs or the limbs rather I so just did it right there. Where are you going? Uh -oh. Go and get another weapon. That's what he's doing. Likes them kendo sticks is Austin. So what I was saying is basically the way they sell in this match, the way they sell both their attitudes towards each other, how they sell, you know, the fatigue throughout the course of the match, especially being a submission match. Austin comes in with so much energy and how much he slowly depletes over the course of the match is a master class in, in showing people how to appear throughout the course of a match so that you may adequately sell what has gone on during it and how you should be feeling because of what has gone on during it. And it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, go watch that match and then you'll understand that it's not just about going, ooh, uh, uh, you know, it's not about making porn sounds, you know, when you're getting hurt. It's not about just making a funny face. It's how you carry yourself. It's about how you open and close your eyes, you know, how tired you look. It's just there's so much more to it than just what a lot of people do. And this match is a tremendous example of how you should go about it. Because, again, just the, the pacing is incredible. Just everything about it is just phenomenal as, in regards to what you can learn about wrestling. I'm trying to work on his legs, but he keeps fucking reversing me. I can't. It's like, we're going to teach you how to do something, but we're going to make it so you can't do. Finally taking them kendo sticks to me. His signature, I believe his signature is Luthez. Yeah. Little Luthez on me. Get out of there. Oh, I'm getting outside. It's a submission match. And here we go. Back <sighs> Son of a bitch. And you can't be holding RB when you're grappling, because I'm trying right now. There we go. Work on them legs a little bit. That should be like one or two moves I need to do. Oh, you can do it at any point. Okay. I thought I just had to grapple him. So you just RB it anywhere. Something, something Arby's commercial. It'll have you saying, I'm thinking Arby's brother. Come on now. But yeah, just the way Austin fades away at the end of the match, it, it looks incredible. And now I went to a sharpshooter. Okie dokie. You have a finisher, Austin, but I can't be pinned in this match, and I don't think you've worked on my limbs nearly enough to make me afraid of you. What makes it sick, JR? What makes it a sick neckbreaker? Does it have the flu? Is it a pervert? Oh, center of the ring, too. That's beautiful. Oh, I'll take that. 
Oh, work that leg around. That looks a bit odd. Uh, sweep it over either way. He's got it on. Austin cannot reach the ropes. This is Bret Hart's move. And who can blame Stone Cold if he gave up right here? Impossible. He's doing the impossible. Nobody's ever broken the sharpshooter. He did it. Or did he? No. Bret Hart still has it on. I thought for sure Austin broke it. But no. Stone Cold trying to reach that rope. Austin will not surrender. He will not submit. Austin here fading. Fading like our love for winter after Christmas. Oh, and that's it. We're going to call for a stop. Another one, one and done. Over here at Nan's apartment is Bret Hart. Voicing his frustration at the loss at WrestleMania 12 we just saw there. Voicing his frustrations at this newcomer, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Who's this son of a bitch? Coming here from Hollywood, Sands the Blonde. So Bret Hart will walk out of this matchup with Victor, but he will walk out of this gameplay. The last match it should be for him in WWE 2K14. So there you have it, folks. Every single objective in the new generation era here on WWE 2K14 in the 30 years of WrestleMania. We thank you for joining us, and as always, we're going to see you next time.